Welcome back to yet another awesome guitar lesson here on Lick and Riff, in which I'm going to teach you the seventh chord shape that not only is it beautiful and very, very applicable, it's also pretty rare. It's rarely in use, so you've probably never heard of this specific seventh chord shape. Now, when I show you this chord at first, you might go, what's the big deal? It sounds exactly the same as the normal seventh chord. But if you listen closely, it sounds completely different and it has a completely different application if you want to play around with the chord. So if we have a seven, a, zero, two, zero, two, zero, eh? Eh? from strings one to five, or five to one, it's a palindrome of a tap, okay, if you ignore the sixth rank, this is the chord I'm talking about. glance, okay, first listen actually, sounds almost the same, but if you listen, there's a huge difference, okay, it's, the, the chord revolves more around the bass, it's a, it's a bit of a fatter chord, it's, okay, if you have this major second here, which is very, very important, Okay, to the sound of the chord. Okay? <clears throat> now, for example, if you do it okay, on D, okay, we're going to talk about bass notes for a second, so let's do uh, D7 over A. Okay? On the higher uh, variations, you hear it pretty... Okay, if you... Okay? Okay? E, for example. You get both okay, the middle A here and the seventh. Okay? Instead of instead of this. So it's a big difference. It's a more economical chord. And it frees up two of your fingers. So you can You can do this, the, the sus chord. Much more, uh, okay, what, much easier, okay? And, or you can add the ninth as well. Okay, so. Okay, you have have the ninth here. Now the sus would be three on the second string, the sus four. The nine would be four on the third string. Now this is a pretty common jazz chord, actually, okay, if you add the finger on the bass. So if you want the full chord with the right bass, Okay, you would use your finger here on five on the on the on the sixth frame. So anywhere you take it, okay, if it's on if the bass is on eight, then it's a C, it's C7. Okay, if the bass is on ten, it's D. If the bass is on okay, if the bass is on twelve, it's E. Now um, this shape a little bit uncomfortable to get uh, used to at first, but Look at how applicable it is. Okay, if you add the nine to it, okay, this, okay, this is a pretty common jazz chord. Okay, so if you're just using this, that's enough. But there's also the higher note. There's the sixth. Okay, you can add the sixth as well. Okay, okay. two on the first. So, instead of doing this, which is a little bit all over the place sound-wise, okay, this is a 
lot more pleasant to the ear. Now if you take it anywhere else and you add the bass, okay, or, okay, or even, you know, okay, higher up on E, okay, then um, it opens up new uh, possibilities, new fingering possibilities over all over the neck. Now, um, if you take this chord, for example, okay, the ninth, ninth chord, and you take the second finger up to three, and you have the sus, okay, the sus four sound, okay, you get this beautiful chord, okay, which uh, leads you into D. Okay, so we already know this chord if you if you're following lick and riff. We know this chord as F over G. But it's not F over G, it's actually G7, 9, add 11. Okay, so Okay, leading you into C. So um in jazz you're gonna see people doing this. Okay? Okay, just moving the finger on the second string. Okay? Sometimes even uh, moving it a fret. Okay, something like this. Okay, this is, uh, it's not common, but it's a common approach. Um, so, at first glance, what's the big deal, right? But, it is a big deal, because on the guitar, sound is of the utmost importance. And this chord, this shape, this fingering, enables you much more in terms of sound. Sound-wise, this chord is far, far more applicable than this, let's call it the folk seven sound. Um, so thank you very much for watching. Go apply it in your own playing. And I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.